I'm going to do a recipe with globe artichokes. I always think people like looking at globe artichokes and they like growing them in their garden because they have this wonderful foliage that comes up very early in the year. In February even, you can start picking it. But people are a bit scared of cooking them. They don't, they're not absolutely sure what to do. So um, I'm going to do this really simple recipe, which is using the artichoke as a whole. In Italy, they think that's, um, that's peasant's work only. They, they're very snooty about eating a whole globe artichoke. I remember cooking it from this recipe for some Italians. And when I brought it to the table, you could see they're very crestfallen. Uh, but by the end, once they'd eaten it, they were very convinced that it was delicious and they thought they would make it again. But they only eat the hearts, which of course are the most delicious bit, but I think it's really good to build up to the heart and, and you'll see what I mean when, when we cook it. But so what you're looking for, for an artichoke to be in really, really good, absolutely top-notch state, is that it's still completely all the leaves are heading to the centre of the bud. Now, as soon as it starts to open up a bit and flare a little bit, it's okay when it's just done it just a small amount, but once it's begun to go brown like this and flare properly, the choke inside has got a little bit too big and it's just not quite so tender. So, so this one here is really peachy. That, that couldn't be better. That is absolutely perfect. You always want to harvest an artichoke with a good bit of stem like that because then they're easier to handle and actually a lot of that stem if you take the tough bits off the outside um, make perfectly good eating so um, put that one. this one's small but, but nice that's fine and I've got a bud there so always look um, and harvest immediately above a bud. You, you don't want to take that because that would be wasteful because that's next week, so the week after. That one feels a little bit dry on the outside, so I think I'm going to leave that one to flower. This one is absolutely perfect, and then I can leave that one to develop behind it. You want to have one of these each as a starter, but if I'm serving them just, you know, only this for a lunch with the recipe that I'm doing, then I might get, particularly men, I might, I might get extra ones and they might want to have two. With globe artichokes, they sometimes can be really, have quite a lot of earwigs and things in, and if you're worried about that, just soak them that way in really, really strongly salted water and for a couple of hours, and then poor bugs um, basically get killed by the salinity and they all sort of drop out and um, so that, that's a good way of um, cleaning them without having to worry too much. So a bit of salt in the water and then just pop them in. People don't tend to cook artichokes for nearly long enough. They want to be so that you they're just almost falling apart in your hands. Not quite but almost. And actually you can tell whether they're cooked by two things. The first is the whole room starts to smell of artichokes. That's a sure sign. And the second is you just have a tug at an outer leaf, and well, they're not leaves, they're, they're bud scales, but you just have a tug and it should come off very easily immediately in your fingers. To do that, you want to, to get them to cook properly that is, you want to put a lid within the pan, and that just weighs them down because they've got such a large surface area they tend to float to the top. So I just put a lid within a lid, and then the other one I've just got on the side like that, so if it boils up, which it shouldn't, but um, it won't, it won't um, boil over. And so I'm just going to leave them now. I'll come back and test them in half an hour, but I reckon most of them it'll take 40 minutes. So I'm going to make the sauce for the artichokes now. And um, so the mix of herbs that I picked, so some chives going in. Not a huge amount of those because they're quite strong. And some tarragon going in now. And again, not a huge amount. Um, I don't want the big stems, but the little top stems are fine because they're not too fibrousy. But again, it's it's strong tarragon, so so not not vast amounts of that. Otherwise, it's a bit overpowering. And then some sorrel, because the stem is really quite fibrous. So you just strip it and tear it up a bit. And I'm not weighing any of this. I'm not even counting it. It's just. I tend to go about 50-60% parsley, sorry, 50-60% other herbs and about at least, a mix of other herbs and at least 
40% just parsley um, and I'm just going to discard the stems there because the parsley is just such a lovely fresh flavour. So that should be perfect. And then a very, very quick blitz. Not, I don't want to pulverise this at all. You can, I can. So just like that, so it's just beginning to break down a bit. And then I'm going to pop in the eggs. want it to turn into just a, a complete sort of mush. I, I, that is about perfect. Just a tiny bit more because the, the chives are always the naughty ones and that's why it's a good idea to chop them a little bit before you put them in. And then literally all you're doing is a good amount of olive oil just to carry the flavours and the vinegar and then finally I'm going to put in the anchovies. So then just Pop in the anchovies, and obviously, if you've got vegetarians, then you don't add the anchovies. But they do add a kind of um, a lovely, I don't know, depth. Such a horrible, pretentious, <laughs> foody word, but they do add something to the flavour, definitely. Let's see if test again. Done. So now I'll just get the artichokes. How you tell they're cooked, I did it in the pan just carefully, but you just give them a tug and that just comes off really easily. Do you see, just like that. And that means they're cooked. And then just to absolutely triply check, you just eat one. And they're really tender in that bit there. So those are perfect. So I've, I'm going to eat all these bits, so just the base there, dipped into the sauce. And you just scoop it out with your teeth. And then I've removed the choke, which is this bit, from the centre of the flour. You just sort of push it off with a spoon or a knife. And that, you can see, wouldn't make very nice eating, because of course an artichoke is a thistle. And so that's going to, it's called the choke because it would choke you. And, and these bits you can eat, but they're hardly worth it. But the rest is delicious. And, and when you get back into the tougher stem, you discard that as well. But all the rest is, is, um, makes the most wonderful eating. And you just scoop a bit into there. Mmm. Yummy. And they're really sweet artichokes. They have this weird sweet aftertaste. And actually, in France and Italy, often you're, you're not given wine to eat with an artichoke because it makes the wine taste really strange. So often you'll just serve water with an artichoke and then the wine comes afterwards because it has such a strong, sweet aftertaste in your mouth. And there we are. Globe artichokes with angelica sauce. Absolutely delicious.